In today's video, I'd like to cover the shelter module for my Urban Bug Out Bag version 3.0. In my previous video of this video series, I covered my shelter strategy from a design and a list of tenants standpoint with regard to discussing topics such as the difference between shelter in a rural and an urban environment, things that you could leverage that are specific to an urban environment uh, as part of your shelter, and then also the idea of the main categories of a shelter module, uh, which in my opinion are what you sleep under, what you sleep in, and what you sleep on. If you haven't seen that video, make sure you check that one out before watching this one. This particular video is just gonna cover the items that are included for the shelter module. All right, so despite everything that was said in the shelter strategy video, I think the best option in an emergency situation first is to bug in. Uh, you have all your supplies with you uh, if in your home base. If your home base is no longer safe to be in for whatever reason, and you have to bug out, whether that be just uh, to your street, uh, across the block, uh, out of the city, I think the best approach in an urban environment is to try to shelter in a structure. So a building that has a door maybe, uh, somewhere that's safe. I wouldn't wanna take my family and uh, put a tent out here in the in the park in the city uh, on a normal day, let alone an emergency situation uh, when a massive amount of people uh, just in a type of dangerous situation. It's just too risky. It's too risky normally. So why would I want to do it in an emergency situation? So unless I could find a structure where then I could put a sleeping bag and maybe a sleeping pad on there, I don't really want to be uh, putting a tent or anything in an urban environment if at all possible. Uh, you know, there might be some situations where you just have to. So my main goal for my shelter module is to get out of the city and get into to the suburbs so where there's at least less people more things that you can leverage even dirt for example and so my shelter module is customized it could work in a, in a straight up urban environment uh, and I'd probably omit the whole tent aspect of it or tarp uh, but it's mainly intended to my number one goal in the emergency situation would be to, if the urban environment is unsafe to get out of the urban environment and get to more of a suburb environment and that's what my shelter module is designed for all right, so I'm currently in downtown Seattle. Let's get out of this urban environment, go over to a suburb environment, and then talk about the details of the shelter module. Now, I've included a PDF document that you can download by clicking the link in the description box below. It has a list of all the items included for the shelter module, uh, the weight of them, the reason that I have them in there, uh, where I purchased them at, you name it. So make sure you download that, and let's cover the items in detail now. Now that we're more in the suburbs, let's start going through all the items in my shelter module. Now for the design of my shelter module, I really want to leverage the items in my clothing module with the shelter module to add additional warmth. Things like uh, thermals, a cap, gloves, those could all be used as part of my sleeping system to provide me with additional warmth uh, in combination uh, with the actual shelter items. So that'll help save on uh, size, uh, real estate, and uh, weight with the bug out bag. The first category for my shelter module is what I'll be sleeping under. So this was a family decision. So we wanted to have uh, a tent set up uh, that would offer some insect shielding, allow us all to be together and also have our gear inside of our shelter. The problem with tents, they're a little bit more bulky, they're heavier and they're a little bit more expensive. So, but uh, what we went with is, uh, I'm pretty happy with this decision. It's the Lightheart Gear Duo Ultralight Tent. This is a very lightweight tent weighing in at only 2.9 pounds, which is really incredible. Uh, I've almost cut my uh, shelter, my tents in half. Most of the tents I have are at least five pounds. This one's 2.9. And uh, it's more of a, it's not a freestanding tent. It's a, uh, you'll need to use uh, trekking poles. I don't usually like using trekking poles. So I have some additional poles in here just to kind of add on ones to use in place of uh, the trekking poles. But this offers a lot of the things I was looking for. It's an extremely long tent at around hundred inches. Uh, we could all fit in there uh, with sleeping pads, pads and gear. It offers the insect shielding that we have and as you see, it comes in this camouflage color, uh, which will really blend in if I wanted to nest it into a, a bushes area or next to some trees and stuff. It's not really gonna stick out at all uh, due to the camo design on here. So this is a, a small company. It's a, known by the ultralighters, uh, but it's a, what I really liked about it, it's kind of like a mom and pop type place uh, made in the USA. Uh, they stand by their gear and uh, you could really have good uh, co uh, dialogue uh, with the people over at Lightheart Gear. So again, this is the Lightheart Gear Duo. Expect a product review coming in on this one, uh, but this is what I'll be sleeping under. To go along with the tent, I like pairing it with a ground tarp. This one is a Tyvek material uh, to protect the footprint of the tent. You could have it cut to the exact uh, form factor of the footprint of your tent to help protect it from uh, water in addition to any kind of punctures from sharp objects. And so you could get this uh, cut to the form factor, you add some little uh, uh, grommets on the end of it to help uh, keep it down. And then this just helps protect the floor of the tent. So a Tyvek ground tarp. 
to go along with the tent, I want to make sure I have a nice set of tent stakes. So the tent stakes that I have are the same ones I used in my previous version of the bug out bag, which are the MSR Groundhog stakes. These are very, very nice tent stakes. Uh, they're very, very lightweight and uh, they have a nice little uh, lanyard over here that made a paracord and they could really take a lot of pressure if you were to step on it with your foot, for example, to help uh, put it into the ground. It's not going to bend on you. As you can see, it kind of has a different design than those, uh, the standard metal ones that are prone to bending and things like that. Uh, these ones are really nice, work well for bug out bags due to their lightweight. And I have enough for the, for the entire uh, tent as well as two additional ones just in case any of them were to get damaged. And I'm using a little uh, REI uh, tent stake uh, holder. So tent stakes. Now let's go over the category of what I'm sleeping in. Now in normal situations, that'd be something like a sleeping bag, which I think is an awesome option. But I try to treat a sleeping bag as an add-on to my bug out bag because I don't want to have my sleeping bag compressed for multiple years. Uh, you'll lose the loft of your sleeping bag and you'll just kind of basically ruin it if it's compressed for that long. So instead I treat it as an add-on that's stored nearby to the bug out bag to hopefully be integrated with it, but I'm not going to be fully relying on it. Uh, the second option that I really like is using a military style wool blanket. I think they're awesome. They work great uh, even when wet. Uh, the only problem is is the amount of real estate that it occupies and the weight of it. It's just a little bit too much for my personal needs of a bug out bag. Uh, but I'm actually working on a side project. It's going to be a follow-up video to this one uh, that leverages that wool blanket, but it's not going to be included in this one because it's not quite ready yet. I'm having to go through uh, various seamstresses and alterations people and stuff to kind of alter it to fit to my system. Uh, but now let's go over the items that I am including. So I'm using a two-part system for what I'm sleeping in. And one of them's gonna be in an emergency bivy. The other one's gonna be a sleeping bag liner. The emergency bivy that I originally chose is the Soul Escape Bivy. I've used this one before uh, and they work really well. The second part is that uh, sleeping bag liner. This one is made by Sea to Summit. It's the Sea to Summit Thermalite Reactor. Uh, this one is advertised as giving you like 20 degrees Fahrenheit, extra warmth. If I could get five to 10, I'd be really happy with that. And then add that into addition to uh, the emergency bivy. So go into this first and then sleep inside of the emergency bivy uh, for the complete system. And uh, with these kind of type of uh, uh, supplies, it doesn't really matter if they're compressed for multiple years. Uh, you're not going to lose any loft or anything like that. Uh, they're designed to be like this. But I've actually recently upgraded the sole bivy uh, to a different bivy uh, based off of a recommendation from my good buddy Rev Hiker. And that is the to go systems trifecta and this one is actually a, a bivy it could also be used as an emergency tarp and also like a thermal blanket it has multiple uses to it and i'm actually upgrading uh what i was previously using with the sole as you see it's a little bit bigger which works actually great for me because uh with this one i i have a, uh, i'm a little bit taller so i kind of stick out a little bit more with this one it fits really well for me i know there are some problems with this one uh one of them being that it, it's a zipper design instead of being a complete uh, enclosed uh emergency bivy so if you were to have any kind of rain coming in it would go through that zipper as a rev hiker showed in his video uh, but other than that i think it works really well for emergency bivy and it's uh, adaptable so if i want to use it as a tarp it has some grommets on the side on all four corners uh, that you could use for a tarp setup also just if you want to have a blanket uh, with that and then uh, and most importantly for my system uh, using it just as an emergency bivy so then i would be using the sleeping bag liner going in that first and then going inside of that uh, bivy by to-go systems trifecta and this is currently what my setup is for what i'm sleeping in the next category that i like to go over is what i'll be sleeping on and what i mean by that is something like a sleeping pad whether that be an inflatable or a closed cell uh, and the one that i went with i wanted to go with something that was durable and quick to deploy and so i eventually settled on the Thermarest Z-Lite SOL sleeping pad. This is a really, really nice sleeping pad. I actually saw these uh, made at the actual Thermarest uh, uh, warehouse where they design all these things and manufacture them. And I was just really impressed with the design. As you see, it has kind of like a egg carton design, so it all collapses in, in itself. So as you could also see, it's a little bit bulky, so it's gonna have to be stored externally on the backpack. But I felt that this would be a, a really good one to have for a bug out bag. It's not that expensive, and you could really place this thing anywhere. As you can see, very quick to deploy. Uh, it just folds out nice and neat like this. You could put this on concrete. You could put it on grass, as you see here. Uh, you could put it on rocks and dirt, uh, you name it. And it's uh, not going to have to worry about punctures and things like that like you would with an inflatable one. And so a uh, quick, quick deployment. Uh, the durability is what I was looking for. And for a closed cell 
uh, you know, sleeping pad. It is uh, compact enough for me. Uh, a lot of the ones that you roll up are going to be a little bit uh, thicker than this one. This one, due to the egg carton design on it, it, it collapses as small as that it can. Uh, but th you could really pair this one well. If you wanted to also include a inflatable mattress on here, you could put that one on top of this one and put this one on the bottom to help protect that inflatable one. So for what I'll be sleeping on, it's the Thermarest X-Lite SOL sleeping pad. An optional item that I include with my shelter module is a pillow. Now there's a lot of different choices for pillows and a lot of it's just for kind of morale for a better night's sleep. Uh, it's nice to have your head resting on something. There's a lot of options available at stores like REI for inflatable pillows. Uh, but you know, to be honest, I don't really trust uh, a lot of those. I, from the reviews, every once in a while you'll see that they uh, will lose their air even over the night. And so I was kind of uh, almost ruling out having a pillow. And then I thought back uh, to SHOT Show from previous this year and uh, from Jill from Locksack and she was a uh, stand on top of a lock, lock sack bag. So I decided to include an A lock sack made by Lock Sack. This is the 12 by 12. And I know this could support the will of Jill standing on it. And so this would make a really uh, great pillow option. So, and I've tested it out. So basically you're gonna just inflate it up. And then what you could do, you know, get it a lot more sealed, seal it, it's gonna be nice and tight, it's gonna be able to take a, a, a lot of weight on there and without leaking. And then uh, the, you could just cover it up with like a t-shirt or a bandana or something like that just to give it a little, uh, the cloth feeling for a pillow. But uh, that's what I'm including for with my shelter module, a pillow made by Locksack. Here's what it looks like when it's a little bit inflated. So again, just use it as a pillow like that. You could even put a shirt or something over it uh, to make it a little bit more comfortable. And uh, because it's a plastic uh, storage container, you could also use it for other things. So maybe for storing water, any additional supplies. So it's definitely uh, multifunctional for a pillow. Now let's set up our shelter module in this small little grassy area. So starting off first, we're gonna lay down our ground tarp. Again, it's a Tyvek sheet to the, fit to the exact footprint of the tent. After we get that ground tarp in there, that's going to protect us from wetness and from sharp objects. Next, we're going to put down uh, the tent. Again, it's the Light Heart Gear Duo Tent, and it's going to sit right on top of that footprint of the, the ground tarp. And so the, the tent's going to protect us from rain, insects, uh, the weather, and the ground tarp's going to protect us from the things coming up from the bottom. So after we get that set up, well, first off, we're going to be using those MSR tent stakes that we talked about. Uh, high quality tent stakes. You can step on them to drive them into the ground. They're lightweight, really nice for a bug out bag, in my opinion. After that, we're going to be setting up what we're sleeping in and what we're sleeping on. So let's set up what we're uh, sleeping on first. So that's going to be the Thermarest uh, foam pad. Again, it's a egg, the uh, egg crate design, so it uh, collapses real nice is real quick to lay out uh, on the tent floor and we're going to allow enough space for us to still put our bug out bag inside of the tent as well. So after we get that set up now let's put down kind of our sleeping bag setup. So again I'm using an emergency bivy in addition uh, to a sleeping bag liner. So let's put uh, the, the emergency bivy down. Again we're using the to-go systems uh, trifecta and we're going to be using it in, in the bivy format and then we're going to be use, when we go in there we're going to be using uh, that sleeping bag liner to provide us with a few extra extra degrees of warmth in combination to the clothes that we're going to be wearing for the shelter module. That's going to do it for this video featuring my shelter module for my Urban Bug Out Bag version 3.0. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching it. Again, I've included a PDF document that you could download by clicking the link in the description box below. It'll have a list of all the items that are included for the shelter module. So please leave your comments below in the comment section and I'll see you guys next time for the next part of the big three. Food, water, and shelter. See you guys.